Janice Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography and today I'm going to make my second video on a series that I'm doing in Adobe Camera Raw. So the first one was basically opening up your image in Adobe, Adobe Camera Raw and today I will talk about the basics. But before I get started I wanted to show you my website. This is my website SullivanJPhotography.com and this is actually my blog area. There's two sections. You just the regular blog, more about information on the business and what I've been up to. And this is actually the tips and lessons and uh, has more of the videos and different uh, goodies on that site. Okay, so just a little bit about myself. Let's go on to the tutorial. I'm going to open up my image. I've made it into a DNG. I talked about that in the first video. But basically, um, it's a raw file. This again, real quickly, is a bland, boring image that I had to shoot and not in the golden hour. It was the only time I could do it. And it is uh, in Arizona. It's called the Painted Desert. And it's actually very beautiful if you get it in the right lighting. But this, unfortunately, I just couldn't do it. But I wasn't going to waste my time and not shoot because I knew it was bad lighting. But just to let you know, a quick tip, when you shoot your images, don't let your camera uh, auto white balance because it will change up different um, images. The reason why I'm saying this is because this is actually a stitch file panorama of three different verticals that I put together. And if I would have had it on a auto white balance, this blue area, say right in here, could be totally opposite from here. So just keep it on daylight, cloudy, or whatever. Later on I will talk about um, some of the tools that you can use to calibrate your camera. x right is pretty cool, but that is not in this video. We'll talk about that later. Today we're actually going to talk about the basics right here. Just this location here. The basics. All of this. Okay? So let's get going here. I want to make sure, even if I didn't use all of these tools, I want you to understand them. Um, you can uh, go ahead. This image is as shot, but if you want to check out the auto and see what uh, Adobe Camera Raw will do for it, uh, all the power, I actually don't like it. It's kind of yellow. But if you want your temperature to be cooler, you just bring your your cursor, your line over here to the left and if you want it to be warmer you can push it off to the right and your image will be warmer. Now if you don't like any of it you could just double click on this and it will go right back to zero. Same with tent. Tent makes it a little greener and then the opposite of green, the other spectrum is magenta. So if you want to get off to the magenta you can go ahead and increase the magenta. This actually looks pretty good um, but I did not use any of these. I stayed with the auto or as shot. I didn't use auto. I'm sorry. I didn't like the auto. So now down below in here I always like to see because I'm curious what is ACR going to do for me so I'll go ahead and click on the auto and see what it's done. I always pay attention to the histograms up here. Make sure I don't blow anything out. Um, if you don't like any of it or you just want to say this is not for me, you can go back to your default and just start from the beginning. Okay, so now what you could do, just uh, actually all these in here, if you go to the left, it will either make it darker or decrease the information, decrease your contrast, decrease the clarity, vibrance, and saturation. Everything to the right increases, increases your exposure, increases your contrast, etc. So we're going to go ahead and show you a little about the, about the exposure, see how it's making this darker, and that's about 0.90 and increasing obviously is lighter. I don't pretty much, I, if I do this I only boop it up just a little bit. I really don't play with the exposures too much unless it's just um, something that just went bad. Now the contrast is pretty neat. What it does is if you increase your contrast it will make your brights brighter and your darks darker 
to give it a little bit of pop. So let's go to the extreme so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is increasing my lights and my darks and it gives it more pop. If I want to decrease it, it makes more of a flat image. So it's depending on where you want to go with your uh, photograph. I will bump mine up a little bit there. The highlights and the shadows I wait actually because I always want to set my white and my black points. White is 255 to the extreme and black is to the uh, left, zero. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to go crazy because I want you to see something. So here's my whites and I'm increasing it as I go. Do you see the red? That is basically blowing these pixels. So the reason why I can see that is because I've typed O for overexposure and this little area in here is highlighted. So see how it has a little square box around there? That means that I have that on. So if I take the O off, then I don't see any of that. So as you're, you could still see that there's some blown pixels, but you're not going to see where they're at. Okay, so I type the O back and I can see it. And let's go ahead and show you the blacks. Same for the blacks. If you go to the extreme, look to the left, all of these are pure black. Now some of the times you might want pure black, but maybe you don't. But if you type the U or just push the U, it will get rid of that so you don't see it. But if, say, if you want to see it, go for it. There's the U. Another great tip is if you go to the Alt option, well let's push this back so you can just see quick. If you go to the Alt options and hold it down and then you click on this, push it down and you go to the left, there's the blacks. Can you see it? That's where it's blown. So that's another great tool so you can see exactly where the pure black is without the image um, distracting you. Uh, the white is actually really neat too because you can really go down to the pixels. I'm already seeing the pixels right in here. I'll let me boop it up real crazy just so you can see it. Okay, but here we go. So let's go here and you can see that this area has the pixels. So look at it again. There it is. But with the image, it's hard to see because I have a, like a red image, but it doesn't matter. I mean, if you want to see in detail, just hold your Option Alt key and go ahead and adjust your image there. Now, the way I start off, I'm processing this image. It's just a beginning digital darkroom. So I don't go to the extremes right from the beginning because I do play with the images throughout and I want to give myself some room. So I'm going to bring these things over, bring both of these over a little bit. So I have plain room in case I want to do something crazy later on. This, then I go ahead and work my shadows, work with my shadows and highlights. So, of course, going to the left, like I said, decreases your shadows if you want more um, darker shadows. And then increasing opens up the shadows. Same with the highlights. I can decrease my highlights or I can increase my highlights, which I actually want to decrease my highlights in this image. Every image is totally different. Okay, so the next three sliders that we have are the clarity and the vibrance and the saturation. So if you want your image to look a little sharper, clarity will bump up the lines around everything. So let's pop up the clarity. So it's given us a little bit of definition. Let's look at the preview. Before and, and after. Okay, so see how it's made it a little bit more defined? But hey, if you're not in that, you don't want your image, you want it to, I'm a fine art work, uh, photographer, so it, look at how cool that looks. It's soft, kind of has a glow effect to it, so you never know. Depending on your image, you might want this effect to it. But for today, for me, I'm going to bump up my clarity. I want you to be able to see all these lines. The vibrance and saturation are really um, 
I like them. Uh, the saturate. Let's let's talk about the vibrance. The vibrance basically is kind of like a fill light, but in color. It increases your intensity of the colors that are a little muted. So um, and it leaves the highly saturated colors alone. So this is a great tool, especially if you're working with people. So if you bump up the vi vibrance, it looks good, but it's not making this totally orange. You'll see the difference when I do saturation. This could be like someone's skin. Now if I want to decrease the vibrance, obviously it will decrease it. So that looks kind of cool too. Those, But vibrance is pretty, pretty neat. I like the vibrance. Now saturation, let's just put this in the middle so you can see the difference. Saturation, on the other hand, takes all of your colors and increases the intensity on all of the colors. So see how it can get really orangey? And you can actually actually start to lose detail in the colors. So you have to be really careful with saturation. Of course, don't be afraid to use it, but you just be careful to use it. And the saturation going down a little bit off to the left. I mean, you could pretty much go to pure black and white, but I would never do that here. Personally, that's my personal opinion. So for this image, I went ahead and booped the vibrance. And I kind of left the saturation alone just because I have a lot of oranges and I didn't want that. So this is basically the steps of the basic area of Adobe Camera Raw. Now, if say if you didn't like any of these and you played around and you want to just start all over again, Go to the um, option and down here to the right, you can see how it's changed to reset. So option, you can go ahead and re click that and it'll reset all of this straight. Okay, so you can do that. Now another thing, I have, because this is a tutorial, I'm not opening my object at this time because usually what I would do is go through all of these and these and then I'd open it up in Photoshop and I showed you in the first video what it would look like with the little icon. But because I'm just working on different videos, I am going to just push done and it saves all of my changes, but it's still going to be a um, DNG. So if I click on this again later on, say tomorrow, if I want to make the next video, all of this has been saved but I haven't gone into Photoshop yet, which is nice because I'm not ready to go there. So when you're done with each of these steps and you say you want to go later and work on it again, just click done and it will save everything. Okay, I hope this has helped you on your basics in Adobe Camera Raw. And our next tutorial will be this guy over here, the tone curve, and hope that you will check out my third video. All right, have a great day. Cheers.